The 2015 Kia Sorento PacWest Adventure Every year, the SEMA show gathers the best in aftermarket automotive equipment out in the desert of Las Vegas. But this year, Kia has a car that should put you in mind of an entirely different part of the country, the Pacific Northwest. And, if the photos and general motif of the Sorento-based concept don't do it, Kia has named the show car, PacWest Adventure. The concept is a shot at imbuing the Sorento with a bit more off-road credibility, and truthfully, Kia did a very thorough job with it. Of course, the Sorento generally isn't the first vehicle that people think of for off-roading, so Kia did have something to prove with the concept. The end result is barely recognizable as a Sorento, even though, with the exception of the rather elaborate paint job, almost all of the exterior modifications are bolt-ons. Moreover, outside of a couple of showy choices to attract the eyes of SEMA's show-goers, this is primarily a sober, and highly practical machine for a weekend outing in the northwestern wilderness. Just look past the crazy paint and the odd choices made for the interior, and it's difficult to think of a better way to outfit a Sorento for off-roading. Continue reading to learn more about the Kia Sorento PacWest Adventure. Exterior What probably caught your eye first about the car is the paint. It would have been easy for Kia to have used a vinyl wrap, but it's actually layered paint with several different shades of green with pearl and candy effects to give it a different look from different angles. There is a forest scene painted on either side, with something apparently glowing just beyond the tree line. It looks as though it could be a screenshot from the X-Files, but that show was shot in the Pacific Northwest, so it's not an entirely inappropriate association. There are also some tire tread graphics over the forest scene for some reason. Otherwise, the modifications to the exterior are pretty much what you'd expect. The coilovers have been swapped out for new Fox Racing shocks and Eibach springs, which raise the ride height by a full 6 inches. There are custom fender flares, under which are a new set of beadlock wheels with big off-road tires. There are custom bumpers, as well as skid plates and side bars, which Kia says have been fitted to protect the paint. The grille has been replaced with wire mesh, although the shape remains unchanged. There is a roof luggage rack, as well as a winch, and if you need a bit of extra light, there are two LED light bars. And, if you need to get across a stream, there is even a snorkel. Interior Like the exterior, the interior has had a thorough going over, and is not exactly what you would call subtle. The dash, center console and door inserts are custom painted in the same electric green that also graces parts of the exterior. The dash has been reworked to incorporate rocker switches for the external LED lighting, as well as a new 8-inch Alpine mobile media head unit. The seats have been reupholstered with what looks to be a mix of cloth and leather, although Kia hasn't actually given any specific information about the materials. There are Kia logos embroidered into the headrests and more tire tread patterns on the cloth parts of the seats. It's all pretty wacky looking, but none of this makes it any less practical, and the Sorento does have a spacious and practical interior. Drivetrain Kia specifically mentions that the engine has been left untouched in the concept, although the engine that has been selected is the highest output of the three offered for the SUV. This produces 290 horsepower and 252 pounds-feet of torque, which really should be perfectly adequate. There is no manual transmission offered, which puts the Sorento at a disadvantage against other serious off-roaders, but it's probably fine for most of the people who actually buy Sorentos. Front-wheel drive is standard on the Sorento, but it is safe to assume that the concept is equipped with the optional all-wheel drive. Conclusion Many of the parts used to make this concept are completely functional, and it has almost certainly made for a more capable versions of the Sorento. Does that make it good in comparison to vehicles that are more obviously built for off-roading? That's slightly more difficult to say, but a lack of solid axles or locking differentials does suggest an all-wheel drive system that's better suited to snowy mall parking lots than to the very serious trails that the Pacific Northwest has to offer. At the same time, Kia doesn't seem to really be offering this as a serious rival to the Jeep Wrangler. The concept is just to help you think of the Sorento as something other than just another large crossover trying hard not to be a minivan, and if all goes according to plan Kia will move a few more units of the all-wheel drive versions of the Sorento.
Love it what would SEMA be without crazy paint and bright green interiors does a good job of making you want to go camping offers a new way to think of the Sorento. Leave it not nearly the vehicle you're meant to think it is an off-roader with paint so expensive you'd never take it off-road all that green isn't making the interior look any less cheap. If you liked this video, please share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.